हेलो 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 वेलकम एवरीवन टू दिस लाइव स्ट्रीम विद द वन एंड ओनली ग्रैंड मास्टर अलेक्जेंडर गोलस शपो हेलो अलेक्जेंडर ग्रेट टू हैव यू हेलो सगार हेलो एवरीवन सो हैप्पी टू बी हियर टुडे विद सो या इट्स वंडरफुल टू हैव यू अलेक्जेंडर वी आर डूइंग अ लाइव स्ट्रीम अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर हियर एंड वी आर गोइंग टू टेल देम व्हाट दे आर गोइंग टू लर्न टुडे फ्रॉम यू बट बिफोर आई गो देयर आई जस्ट वांट टू गिव अ वेरी शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन अबाउट यू एंड इट रिक्वायर्स ओनली वन फ्रेम टू टू गिव दिस इंट्रोडक्शन व्हिच इज दिस वन द द पर्सन हु इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर uh 10 grandmasters in indian chess uh, you know you've trained 10 of them they include parimarjan negi uh, vaibhav suri sethu raman there is uh, ankit rajpara shardul gagre aditya mittal aditya samant ritwik raja sl narayanan uh, arjun kalyan uh, yeah, i think i covered all of them it's amazing yeah. <laughs> thank you so much alexander for being here Uh yeah it's uh, it's it feels great to be here as well with you and with our audience with so many people joining uh, this live stream so i have prepared uh 10 games and um, uh and these live stream will be devoted to positional play which i feel are probably the most are uh the most are challenging i would say aspect of uh chess for young players right because uh, most of young players are calculator uh, calculators they keep calculating uh, again and again spending lots of time and energy ending up in time troubles making mistakes right? right so i believe there are many people who are who know this situation very well So that's why in these uh, short live stream I would like to share as much as I know as much I can about positional play and uh, so I would definitely reveal some of some of the secrets of positional play fantastic so yeah I prepared a uh, different level positions so that uh like even our not less experience or players would learn a lot from this class as well as I believe I believe uh title players uh, it would be uh, useful for them as well because uh the, in this format we have only like one three minutes per position which okay. is very challenging right and of course it is not about calculation we have no time for that it's more about uh it's more about intuitive decisions it's more about uh applying uh already uh, your knowledge so of course there are many strong players so please apply your knowledge whatever you know about positional play yes and i believe you will learn something else today right and i think uh, it's uh, going to be very important for them to give it their full attention and answer because there is going to be special prizes that will be given at the end we are not going to reveal it right now but give your best and you don't know maybe you get a chance to learn even more chess because this is all about chess improvement so you know dedicate yourself give uh, everything and alexander you have chosen around 13 positions for today so should we begin with the first one yes let's not waste our time so we have lots of content for today okay so let's see the first position this is ashwin jairam versus dorsa derakshani uh, and can you tell us who is to move and what is the idea here? what what do they have to do here so uh, in this position it is white to move so and uh, just uh, you have like about 1 3 minutes for this position and try to make your intuitive decision how would you proceed as white in this position so just no rush uh, even if uh, just some intuitive idea comes in your mind so just still spend a little bit of time and then uh, give us your well thought decision in our right so just okay. some technical issues sagar you can explain how it works yeah? yes please write down in the chat what your move is here and it's white to play 
what will you do here is the question and once you write down your move we will uh, check it i have this uh, uh, nice uh, chat chess moves here where we can see your answers uh, that are there and we will be able to then uh, give you feedback uh, so right now put it down there also think a bit about what you would like to do okay we already have a lot of answers and here uh, you know alexander uh, the move that is the one which our chat is all very very excited about is the move g5 we have 18 19 people who have said g5 f5 is the next move then we have knight f2 uh, rook h2 rook e1 maybe rook h e1 so these are the few moves but clearly g5 knight f2 and f5 are the three main moves suggested so let's give one more minute for this position so okay. that uh, uh, if you want to change guys if you want to change your answer you can also do it uh you can also explain in the chat why you think a special specific move you want to play you can type down I, uh, some of them we can i can read it out to alexander so he knows your thinking behind why yeah, you that's want to actually a great idea if you if you are really active if you participate actively writing your ideas behind your every decision explaining our your decision writing some general uh ideas uh, general uh principles that you apply it would be really great and definitely you have more chances to deserve a prize today okay so, so I will uh, try to reward the most active, the most successful um, people today in this live stream. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, De Deboshnik says uh, that I want to play knight f2. My idea is to move the queen and play knight d3. I'll just read out a few more. LGX Kanau says he wants to go g5 because it attacks the knight. Tushar Kuwar says he wants to go queen d2 to exchange the queens with queen b2. And uh, yeah, these are the few. Uh, Narendra Khandekar says g5 because it will remove the doubled pawns and the knight can later give a fork on f7. So these are uh, some of the thoughts that I can read out. And we have many actually who have written their thoughts here. Okay, so let's... Uh... Let's discuss this position and, uh, you know, the main thing I teach my students is to feel uh, at the main point in every position. So that's why we have, in my classes, we have lots of discussions and let's try to understand the main point in this position. What is this position? What are the main factors in this position? So like you can see that our white, our white has more space on the king side, it seems our white position looks are more attractive and uh, the question is how to proceed right here mm, and uh, yeah g5 is not by chance i said that most of young players are of tactical okay. nature they look for very active moves but uh, of course uh, this is typical situation that playing such active moves so you very often we play helping chess those yes is a term i introduce in my interview with sagaria yes. we uh simply force our opponent to play only good moves mm. and this way improving opponent's position which is of course very bad practical mistake first of all i think g5 doesn't look good because of knight h5 simply and you improve your opponent's knight but you do not improve your own pieces and also you are losing a pawn right yes. i don't think it's a good idea so unfortunately for why there is no straight way to make progress that's why we should look for more positional ways to improve the position mm. and of course when it comes to positional play our we should our analyze the position of our pieces right Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, you can notice that uh, white pieces are not perfectly placed. And there is uh, one piece which, which definitely should, which definitely to be improved, right? And what is this piece? Try to answer this question in the comments. So what is, our, what, what is the piece mm -hmm. that white really needs to improve? Mm 
Okay. And what would be the ideal way to improve this piece, right? This type of questions you should ask yourself in order to improve your positional skills. So, and you I know, hope Alexander, you found... The full chat is filled with night, 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 night. Everyone Great. feels the night is not Great. Right and right, it's very classical general principle that say, right? Night on the rim is dim, right? Yes. I think it's something like that. Yes. So, and of course, why we should care about our nights and why in most of cases the night is the piece that we should care first of all mm. the night is a short range piece right it's much easier to improve all the other pieces like bishops rooks or queen because they are long range pieces but night the night is a short range piece we need more time for oh. its improvement Very right and that's why in this position are one of the major skills you should uh, develop is uh, the ability to ask yourself such questions, which uh, are which piece, which pieces I need to improve, and what are the ideal squares for my pieces. And I hope you found that the knight belongs to d3 in this position, which would be a really great square. Mm -hmm. Let's see how the game is going. So, wow. and I hope you understand now that the right move is knight f2. Wow. Uh, this is the most flexible way to improve the pieces because where to go with the queen, we will decide a little bit later, depending on the situation. The queen can go to d2, c2, or maybe e3, depending on the situation. That's why try to improve your pieces as flexible as possible. What does it mean? It mm. means that you should try to keep more options open. Right. And also, you are less predictable for your opponent this mm -hmm. way. So let's Alexander, move on. there's one question which a lot of them had. Is that, is it possible to play f5 with the idea of getting the knight to f4? It is also an interesting and logical way. But in this case, uh, black is on time to make use of the e file in this position. So you can show the line. I yes, think rook, rook a6, a6 queen, queen c2. c2. Take capture, check. capture. White has to waste a tempers, and now black is on time to create counterplay. <laughs> so, uh, of course, we should not forget that the white king is exposed, and black has some um, decent counterattacking chances mm -hmm. in this position. So that's why we should be very careful to open the e file. Right. So that's why knight f2 is the best move. And then black went queen a5, queen c2, king b8, knight jumped in. And that's a very important concept I would like to share with you. So it's not just enough to look for good squares for your pieces, but ideal when you you demand from your pieces a mounter purpose. Uh, you are looking for multi-purpose squares for your pieces. Like in this position, the knight is doing an amazing job. Not only uh, threatening knight to e5, which is a really great square for the knight, central outpost, but white is able to prevent black's counterplay with c7 to c5 in this position. Mm, nice. So, and like, yeah, and this white has already some positional advantage, like rookie one. And another okay, like, and this is uh, how white can proceed. White species are very well coordinated, and that's actually what we should aim for our in positional play. We are looking for coordination of our pieces, right? right? In this case, it's time to open file because it is white who has better prospects. King b2 is a nice move to keeping the opponent's queen away, yeah, and in this of... position. After rook e7, for example, white is getting a clear positional advantage because of much better uh, placement and queen on a5 is very badly misplaced as well. So Brilliant. So, this so was, what can we learn? Uh, yeah, just go. before you go ahead with what we can learn from this, I want to just uh, give out the names of who wrote knight f2 first. First 10 names. Khoi Guen Trai. P. De Debauchnik, Mr. Auke, Charvi Chaudhary, Pankaj Ashan, Devi Prasad, Anirban Mundal, Yash Karnani, and Nirnay Agrawal. Congratulations, guys. You all found Knight F2 first. Uh, yes, 
uh, what so what can they learn from these are small example of course uh you should care about all your pieces so you should see misplaced pieces in your camp and you should look for ideal squares for your pieces right try to improve your pieces as flexible as possible so that you keep more options open look for multi-purpose squares for your pieces so that you combine your own ideas and defensive functions prophylaxis ideas as well brilliant Okay. So let's move to the next example. Second position coming up, guys. Uh, be ready. This one, uh, now you now you have an idea of a little bit about what positional play is. Here's the next one. This one. Black to play. Is, Can you flip? Yes. Yeah. Black to play, guys. Uh, think a bit and answer what should black play in this position. It's between Kautilya Thakur and Moksh Doshi, who's now in this game is 2-1-4-8, but now he's an IM and a, and a strong player. So try to figure out what would you do here. <laughs> this one is a little tricky here uh, because black, the material is equal, but black has doubled pawns on the queen side. Try to think. We have uh, many, many answers, which are... So try, try to apply the ideas we are discussing mm. during these live streams. So immediately try to apply. I think, uh, Alexander, it's very important for improving players to grasp something, not just like learn it, but also apply it. Uh, if you don't apply, there's no point of learning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Whatever you're learning, you should immediately apply. You should try to do it consciously with proper understanding of their general principle that you're trying to apply. Okay. Let's have a look at what uh, answers have been uh, given here. We have many, many answers, but this time oh. in a big, big way, the move is Bishop F8. 33 people. In fact, uh, Snehal Bhosle... Aruna Sumanthi Laka, Subrajit De, Adya Gupta, Shub Chandra, Shankodip De, Anirban Mondal, Nice, and Vikas Nishad. They all have mentioned Bishop F8. Uh, but I want to understand. I, I read out the names, but is this the correct move? Yeah, this is actually how we apply the ideas we discussed in the previous example. And one of the major positional skills is ability to look for idea squares for our pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice example. And like if you it's very important to see the board, all 64 squares. Uh, and to see the geometry of the board, mm -hmm. yes, files, diagonals. Uh, I would post squares for knights, strong weak squares, and that's very important. Our uh, part of positional skills, and like in this position, if you ask yourself what would be ideal squares for my pieces, and you use imagination, you can find something, some great idea, right? Yes. Of course, it is also a lot about my concept of tactical motives. There are some tactical weaknesses in white camp. Like you can see that uh, the white pieces king and both rooks are on the same diagonal. And uh, so uh, tactically strong people uh, got this idea very quickly. The yeah. bishop belongs to h6. So, and then you can understand, can I get my bishop to h6? And then uh, if you ask yourself this question, you can get move bishop of eight. Beautiful. And after bishop of eight, Exchange is going and black is winning this game. Yeah, in the game he blundered it. Uh, can can but... we ask our chat very quickly what is the winning move here? Uh, okay. <laughs> this is our, uh, that's a little, we, we, that's we, more for. We should ask at least guys, 50 of you should answer this very quickly. Black to play. Okay. Here so we have this. we have very uh, very young less experienced players and so we give a, ch a chance for everyone to participate <laughs> right no i think they they all are when it's tactics they are very quick when it's about creating a threat 
attacking something everyone you can see it's like the entire uh, chat almost has found this 64 people have answered this so devi prasad aruna viresh atrinjay p nitik reddy shri john abibau daivik and shankodeep well done guys okay yeah, it looks like a tactical example, but in fact, in order to find this idea, you should have well-developed positional skills, ability to see ideal squares for your pieces, mm -hmm. and also ability, you should develop this habit of asking, okay, what are ideal squares for my pieces? So it's not only about calculation, but a little bit of abstract thinking and looking for ideas before calculating. Right. Okay, so Bishop F8 was the move here. Uh, and uh, Alexander, should we go to the next one? Yeah, I think we have already said, yes, uh, this example is about our ability to see the whole board, mm. ability to ask yourself such important question is, where do I need my pieces? Yeah, what are the idea of squares for my pieces? And of course, you know, uh, you know that... Uh, there is a thin line between positional chess and tactics, of course, right? Mm -hmm. So we should even, uh, like in quiet positions, looks like quiet positions, we should be tactically alert not right. to miss such a great chances. Absolutely, yes, very much. Uh, by the way, one of our viewers is asking, can you explain point-wise what we have to remember while we play a move? And uh, I think, Ujan, one of the things which you should do is watch this stream carefully because here is where you are getting all the points. So instead of trying to get all the points, watch this and try to learn. Yeah, let's move step by step. Like... <laughs> okay, let's go to the next one. This one is yeah. white to play. White to play and uh, so you have time. Yeah, this one is between Vadas from Hungary and his opponent is Ungurianu from Romania. Uh, what should White play here? This looks like a tricky position just out of the opening. Eight moves have been played. Any Anything that they should think about specifically while they are... Yeah, so again, try to feel the main point. What is the main point in this position? Yeah, probably mm -hmm. it is uh, quite an advanced question. My students are good used to that. Hmm. And I see there are many of my students in this oh, chat. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. But you so... know, uh, uh, Alexander, I'm actually surprised at the number of people who have come up with this move. I can show you the graph which uh, they have. And look at this. We have like close to 34, like we have around 40 people who have answered. 34 of them have gone for Bishop B5. That's great. I see we have a strong group today. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, almost like so many advanced players. And so you are absolutely right. But try, right, what is the main point in this position? So write in your comment. Mm. What is the main point? What do you feel? Aman Agrawal says, Bishop B5, in order to play Knight E5 to create pressure on the Knight, and make use of the pin. Okay, it's, <laughs> it is a very tactical approach. In <laughs> fact, uh, of course, the point behind B should be five is more positional rather than mm -hmm. tactical. So... Um, I think most okay. of the people yes, want the E5 square. That's what yes. they have been mentioning. Absolutely. I see the comments and yes. Uh, so... The main point in this position is that you can see with move of five, which is extremely committing, black weakened the e5 square, which which is a central and extremely important strategic square. So, and uh, such weak uh, central squares are a huge landmark. So that uh, it gives us clear idea or how how to relocate our pieces and what pieces to exchange, what pieces to preserve, because mm. everything is rotating around such strategic squares like e5. And let's see the game. Yeah, bishop So b5. the point behind bishop b5 is, of course, we should try to eliminate the key defender of the e5 square, which is the c6 knight. He takes it. So it's time to eliminate the knight. 
and and uh, i think it's very important in positional play to understand what is more important right like sometimes it's the bishop pair sometimes it's the weakness of a square and that gets confusing for for absolute yeah absolutely and uh, of course uh uh, the ability to feel the main point in the position is probably one of the most advanced skills, uh, right? And it takes, uh, of course, it takes lots of time and takes years and years to to master this skill. So, and I believe um, uh, even strong grandmasters, uh, there there is room for improvement for mm -hmm. everyone. I believe. True. So he brings and yes, answer. again, we can see a 92 is very important move that knight c3 is not doing anything from the fight for e5 square point of view. Mm. And the white relocates the knight to control, to increase uh, his control over the e5 square. Ah, So, oh, this is very similar to our first example where the knight went from f2 to d3. Here it's going from here to here to d3 and e5. Wow, very nice. So, and now, if we feel that e5 is the main point, then we can think in the right direction. So, like, you can see that white is uh, regrouping the pieces perfectly so that knight uh, f3 will be played and so kind of we will uh, push this knight back, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, clearing the e5 and getting better control over e5 square because of uh, e file, right? Mm. That's another great point behind this uh, regrouping. Okay. Sh should I go through the entire game or? Yeah, let's okay. move a little bit faster because we have uh, lots of positions today. Let's see, actually, uh, there will be a few instructive moments in the game. So let's see. And that's a very typical moment. Like, you know, how to succeed. What is our strategic goal in those positions when there is a such a huge weakness uh, on e5. Mm. So our task is to exchange all our opponents are first of all minor pieces, like to in order to get full control of this square. Like bishop e5 is a positional mistake. The black position is really difficult, but giving the last piece, the last minor piece that is controlling our e5 square is probably already decisive mistake right because now white is getting huge our domination without any counterplay and this is the worst possible scenario for black so the bishop is coming to e5 we have opposite coward uh, bishop middle game and the activity attack is the main point here so again white is uh, White is using the principle of two weaknesses, combining play on the queen side where we have a strong passer and mm. king side where we have another object for attack, is, which is g7 square, right? Beautiful. And now this move. And that's switching the f4. Rook. And the rook is joining that attack. So, and that's king h2 we should not forget about profu access which is very important part of positional play as well and now this next move is very pretty as well to trade the rooks to enter from the other side so you're, you're going and, here and here and exchange of the key defender is one of the mm. most uh, important uh, aspects uh, by the way not only in positional play but in attacking chess as well right so take h6 and here uh he resigned the game yeah yeah the piece is going and a very nice very clean our positional game about how to fight for such strategically important square like central outpost on e5 so white succeeded a lot exchanging opponents key defenders and occupying the e5 square finally yes very nice. So, right? it, it was like one story which developed like throughout the game, the E5 square. Like if we feel the main point, then <laughs> yes. our moves are uh, have very clear logic, right? Absolutely. Behind every move. Very cool. Okay, let's move to the next example. We should learn to analyze, you know, one very important hint I can give you. And that's what I teach uh, my students in my course is... Uh, you should learn to analyze pawn structure 
mm. to understand what pieces to exchange, what pieces to preserve, because uh, the concept of uh, weak, strong and weak squares is one of the most important in positional play when it comes to pawn play. Right. Amazing. Okay. So let's go to the next one here. This one is black to move uh, between Nimzovic and Capablanca, two great legends, uh, two amazing players. And uh, any any uh, hints here, uh, Alexander, for our viewers? Uh, what should they be looking for? Again, as usually, my hint is always the same. Try to feel <laughs> the main point. <laughs> okay, guys, try to feel what is happening here from think, what you have uh, learned. I think our group today is quite strong and we would not give <laughs> our two big hints. So try to feel the main point and... Uh, Okay. So what do you do? This one is a slightly tricky a, one. Quite a famous example. I, I think I, I example, saw it very, like when I was very young, around uh, 13, 14 years of age, I, I had seen this example. Uh, so very, very instructive. Let's see if our chat. Yeah, this is an example which illustrates another important element of positional play. Hmm. Okay, not only positional play, but I would say okay. an important element of chess in general. Right. So let's have a look at what our uh, chat has come up with, the moves. And in fact, it's a huge, huge 43 people have gone for E5. De Debauchnik, Saraswati Saru, Mukund A, Shreya Rajesh, Yeshu Raj Joshi, Vihan Dauda, Daivik Jain, Shub Chandra, Devi Prasad and Atrinjai Sahad. All of them have played the move E5. Uh, is that the correct move? Yeah, that's absolutely correct move. And what is the main point in this position? Yeah, so try to answer ah, this that's question. That's an important one. Not just the what move, the guys. What's the main point? What is the main point, right? So it's very important uh, to, you know, to talk about chess, to express your thoughts. So uh, the more uh, you can expre express your thoughts, explain your point, uh, the, the faster you will be able to develop your positional skills. Mm. You know, uh, there are differing answers here. Uh, I mean, not maybe same, similar concept, but some of them feel that the f2 point is an important point here. Some of them think that getting the rook to the seventh rank with rook d d2 is important. Yes, and that's absolutely correct. And the main point in this position that we have already one rook penetrated to the second rank. So, and uh, uh, those who studied my system of Nimsovich. Their chapter open file, you I hope you remember that what Nimsovic says about open file. He says that the final goal of playing an open file is penetration to the seventh rank. Here it is the second rank with reverse covers, which is absolutely the same. And the next point is that once you penetrate it to the second rank, look for objects for attack on the seventh rank, right? Mm -hmm. And here the key object for attack is f2 pawn, so that we should try to bring more pieces to attack these, uh, these are vulnerable point on the second rank in white camp. So, mm -hmm. and uh, just sacrificing just very little material we can get huge initiative penetrating with the second rank to with the second a rook to the second rank yeah and that's so uh rook of fun probably would have been the most spectacular but unfortunately uh so who played as white remind me uh this is nimzovic as well nimzovic yes. nimzovic knew the his own concept very well and he didn't like to <laughs> Can we can we ask our view, viewers to guess the move here? White, black to play. Not not yeah. uh, to the theme of today's session, but uh, still very interesting move. Mandy, you should calculate properly. Okay, <laughs> so very carefully. 
again, right? My students know when you go, if you if you go for some tricky idea, you should calculate lines very precisely, mm. checking your opponent's candidate moves very carefully because we have hunter hunter who's given one the move, entire line. One move, one move is not sufficient here. Rauno Rana move. has given. Is he your student? Yes. Ah, okay. He's found the full line. So, guys, if you understand, if you want to become a good player, it's not only about one move. You find that move, then try to look if the opponent has any defensive or good ideas there, and then you go deeper. So, right. So, like line. I would say, if you make a position of decision, okay, one move can be sufficient because. Like there is no risk of uh, making a big mistake, but when you go for some very direct, so it might be sacrificing material or going for some dynamic operation, you, sh you must calculate very precisely. Uh, if you miss opponents are counter attacking idea, you, it might be a big mistake. Mm. So, and I see that, yes, I see many people Huge, huge number of people have given this uh, line, uh, Alexander, which is, I can read out a few names. Nimai Agarwal is given this, Atrinjai Saha, Mukund A, Pooja Nodi, Nitik Reddy. Uh, guys, I'm sorry if I have not read all the names, but uh, there are so many of you who found it. Queen takes E3, uh, because of course, if you take here, this is a very nice checkmate. But I think what you were uh, expecting is for them to see this move, yes? Of course, yeah. Bishop f4 is a must to see move because you may lose an exchange. And there, so you should have calculated further. And that's a point, right? We have another great move, which is rook f2. And their so mate is inevitable now. Okay, wonderful. But actually, I want to say something important. So put the position. So, yeah. And you know, it's a great advantage to be strong positionally because you know, are uh, you know, not always you have time to calculate lines. So, yeah, just look at funny. I played this move. Mm -hmm. And you know, are uh, if you are positionally good, then and you can are. Uh, you are able to find good positional moves, avoiding calculation. It is very practically very, very valuable because you know in time trouble, you can you can easily miss bishop of four, and not always you have such great move like rook of two. So that's when practically better to to uh, you know to play positionally when you are low on time. And actually, there is a positional way which is even more reliable, I guess. Simply, we can bring more energy by positional means. Ah, so How yes. can we develop our attack by positional means, right? Try yeah. to find the move. Okay, black I see play. that. I see that many people found actually the move queen d5 with the idea queen f3, In... and that's sufficient. Yes, Prashant Tiwari, Amit Salvi, Fortnite, and Daivik. These were the first ones who actually played this move. Ah, the idea is to come here. And queen f3, and it's just mm. finished because rook f2 is unstoppable. And it's just position away, actually. Mm. So there is no move e4. Nice. And it's really good to be positionally strong so that you don't need to calculate many lines. And even playing on, on seconds, like playing blitz on rapid, you can be successful by playing such simple positional decisions. You don't need to calculate all the time. Right. Calculating, going for such dynamic operations like Queen E3, you can miscalculate. But if you play such positional moves, right, this is practically better very mm. often. Very cool. Very cool. So, what can we learn from this example? With this simple example, I wanted to illustrate one more very important element of of chess and positional play, which is open file, which is of course has great strategic uh, importance. So, and what we can learn, as Nimtsovich says, the, uh, try um, playing an open file, you should try to penetrate to the seventh rank. And once you penetrate it to the seventh rank, you should look for objects for attack on the seventh rank. Like here, our F2 was the most vulnerable point, but even G2, H2 squares were unprotected, and that's why Black succeeded in this 
are attacked and in this attack amazing you know alexander uh, before we go to the next position uh, there is something that is mentioned here by uh, maharishi ray in the chat who says i have never seen such a focused chat on chess base india where everyone's just answering you know like completely focused and one of our moderator said there are so many answers being written that we have a bot on our channel which hides some of the answers because you know when lot of comes so he has to manually write show 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 to everyone like he had to click on that button so there are so many answers being put up so uh, it's amazing uh, how many people are taking part and giving answers here okay great great i'm happy to see so many people actively participating and so many content we have so let's move further to okay. the next example let's go to the next one and jaya at the rate of says where can we find courses by uh, this grandmaster who is teaching us jaya we are going to talk uh, more about it in a bit but uh, alexander if you just want to shortly tell uh, our viewers where can they find more for from you. so uh, first of all uh, you can get uh, you can find some courses on my website chess.coach so uh, in the uh, in the shop but it's better if you contact us directly so that we would uh, provide the full list of our courses because actually we have many more mm. uh, both recorded courses as well as live courses so that you can learn from me are uh, attending my live classes. So both options are there. That's uh, why the best way is just contact us and we will provide full information. How to con what's the email ID? Uh, email ID, uh, I think you will provide, right? Yes, uh, email I, I can ID. just write down right now to them uh, I, if you can tell me. Uh, uh, like it is uh, chess.coach.gm. Uh, yeah. Okay. Under it, so uh, gmail dot under it uh, gmail dot com. Yeah. So chess dot coach dot gm at gmail dot com. Yes. Okay, guys. I've and also uh, we will provide our WhatsApp number. Okay. So that you contact us directly. Okay. So I will put that WhatsApp number in the description uh, shortly. But right now I have the email. And uh, one of the best things about Alexander is that whenever I tell him like what is good for a player, he says, first, I need to identify their level. Before that, I can't recommend anything. So here also, when you will reach out to him, perhaps he will uh, figure out what is the best for you. Absolutely. We have courses for very different levels. So that's why uh, just uh, before getting some course, you should... Uh, ask my recommendation. So depending on your level, I would recommend you are the best course for your needs. Okay, brilliant. Okay, we... So, and maybe for uh, maybe I can briefly say that actually there is a great opportunity uh, to learn to improve your position or play uh, because already tomorrow we start uh, a new uh, a course, a live course uh, devoted to positional play. Mm -hmm. So a few seats are left. So that's why if you really like to join the course, hurry up. And I, I we will consider a few our people to include to the group. So we start tomorrow. And so for more information, uh, we will share more information with you right in the are uh, below their live stream right yes below the live stream and also at the end we will talk about it it's the breakthrough course and i will tell you all about it um it's it's uh, epic uh, so alexander this next one position we have is with moksh doshi and mohammed bashik imros and you know i just pasted the position while you were saying and people are like all writing the boost. So if you can tell them what is it that they have, uh, what is it uh, here? It's the same? Uh, okay. You know, uh, I never give any hints to my students, actually, because the major thing we learn, uh, we learn is to feel the main point 
in every position, mm -hmm. right? Of course, my students sometimes know the topic, but not more than that. Right. So, and we have very broad topic today. It is about positional play. That's why your task is really challenging. Okay, so you should learn. You should try to feel the main point in this position. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yes, I guess. Are we have already some we have answers. huge number of answers that have been given and uh, here they are uh, the move that has been recommended I'll make this board a little shorter so we know that oh. A5 is what 22 people have mentioned Anirban Mondal P Shaumik Nimai Sambharta Yeshuraj Adarsh Devi Prasad Harshada and Fani Chand all of them have said A5 is that the correct move that's absolutely correct move and by far the best move in this position. Yeah. Try to explain what is the point behind this move, actually. I see some comments. Yes. So try to down. be more detailed. You know, are there are more uh, ideas you share with me, the better feedback you would get, right? So this is very important. Mm -hmm. Because you know, sometimes people play the best move with wrong idea, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's true. And what is the point behind move? A5. You know, uh, let's discuss, uh, first of all, the position. What is this position, right? If you put uh, the move back, mm -hmm. let's uh, try to understand the position. What is this position? First of all, we can see the position is closed. There is The center is closed. We can see the pawn chain in the center. Mm -hmm. And in such strategic, those positions are very strategic by its nature. Mm -hmm. And in such positions, the first question is not how to play, but the first thing is where to play, right? So okay. we should try to understand whether to play on the king side or on the queen side or maybe in the center. But actually, as we can see, we cannot do anything in the center. The center is closed. So where to play? Mm -hmm. And the rule says play where you are stronger, right? So in this case, are we... We are not able to do anything on the king side. It is black who is going to create counterplay on the king side. Are any kind of moves like a four are positionally terrible because you would change the pawn structure in black's favor. You would only create weaknesses and you would make opponents terrible g7 bishop active, right? So right. that's why, as I say, Play with your pawns skillfully to make your pieces happy, opponent's pieces unhappy, mm. which means use your pawns to restrict your opponent's pieces. So we have good pawn structure on the king side, and there is no need to change anything. But we have very clear plan on the queen side where we are actually stronger. So and move e5 is really great and very typical positional move. What is the point? We are able to fix those b7. A6 pawn, so neutralizing opponent's pawn majority. And it is white who is going to play on the queen's side now. What is our plan? We are going to play. So what is our plan on the queen side, right? There is a clear plan. Right. Let's let's make the move which was played in the game. Queen so C7. in the game was played queen c7. And again, you have an intuitive decision. Please uh, send a message. What to and play I see that as white here. What to play as white. How to proceed on the queen side. Very and I important. see that most of people are thinking the right way, but execution is not precise, you know? Mm. Again, uh, it's always combination of our strategic understanding and the uh, precise execution, which also requires some calculation, right? But first you need to understand, then you need to calculate. Right. So how to proceed in this position? Uh, there is a very energetic way to proceed without waste of time, because some people I see play bishop d2 with the idea to Queen play. Queen d2, bishop d2. Some have even gone knight b1 with the idea of knight d2, oh, knight c4. A little bit slow. We mm. should, even in positional play, we should value time, right? Because mm. time is important. And actually, the most precise way to develop is a really great and very energetic move. How many people play that? So just can you show? Uh, that one, yeah, the move. Let's see who have answered. It's interesting to see. 
uh, the energetic Five people. Move. Yes, of course. In this position, our white has a few ways to proceed. And uh, like in positional play, sometimes there are a few good options. So that's why. Our, uh, but I think, in my opinion, the most uh, precise way in this position. Yeah, knight a4 is a good idea. But after queen a5, what are you going to do? Knight c5, queen d8. It doesn't look too clear to me, I guess. Hmm. Because pawn a5 was very, very important. Right. And giving the pawn, I don't like this idea. So exactly. this position is still probably better for white, but I guess not the most precise. And we have a very energetic way, which is actually, I see many people play it as well. Yes. And it... the move is b4. So adjust, we can open files are on the queen side for their to release the energy of white pieces. So let's see the game. So if takes his and now knight for knight for is coming. So and that's a little example how tactics serves a strategy because after queen a5, we obviously have knight b6 winning lots of material. So that's why this is how strategically strong move before works because of simple tactical reason and so strategically the game is over here let's take a look the strategically the game is over and now white has complete domination actually there why, will be why do you say that game is strategically over here uh, strategically over because a white has very very clear plan and black is unable to stop it so like we have we have our all our pieces are great. We have the c5 and great outpost on c6. The rook will penetrate to c6 or c7. Uh, the black knight on h5, bishop on g7 is absolutely terrible. Yes, and the next move is very, very important, by the way. And it's actually that illustrates another probably the most advanced aspect of positional play. Mm. And this is where young players are not so strong so just uh try to make a move okay guys what do you play here as white uh, and uh, the hint is so maybe it is too <laughs> advanced i guess let's see what our chat comes up with hint is that you need to be careful if you are very young i know that there are a few of the people watching who are like 10 11 12 year olds uh, try to see what is the move you want to come up with and i think most of them, uh, Alexander, as you rightly pointed out, want to go in like rook c7. They want to be active. They want to do something. Okay, maybe it is also working, by the way, because... Uh, but what can I say? In such a strategically uh, better or even winning positions, uh, you know, uh, one of the major rules to remember about is that Try not to be careful with your opponent's ideas and try not to give any counterplay because actually the only idea Black has in this position that you should be very, very careful with is what is Black's oh, only idea? What, yeah, is, what Black's is Black's counterplay? Idea. Active idea. Yes, I, I see that. Bhupanath, very good. Raunav Rana, Saint snip, Snipes. Uh, we have Aruna, very good. Daivik Jain, Amit Salvi, so, Nitik Red. Okay. So the only real idea in this position is uh, to make work knight of four. Directly mm. or, or maybe first g5 and then knight of four. Yeah. And this is only the only way I think to get real counterplay on the king side. And actually we should be very careful because knight of four would change drastically the course of the game. And at least practically, it is always, always uh achievement for the weaker side in such bad strategically bad situations mm. that's why the move which was played is very nice i guess from this point of view and uh, moksh played simply move f3 stopping any kind of ideas with knight f4 there is no counterplay anymore and the game is practically over queen b4 rook c6 everything is coming and uh, the game is 
lost you can if you you can check yourself so but the game is absolutely lost here uh no i mean uh, when i say the game is lost it does not mean that you should resign absolutely not you should always fight till the very end i'm talking from you know from our uh grandmaster level point of view i mean mm. objectively saying right 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 okay that was a beautiful example so much to learn from one example itself and uh, before going to the next one alexander do you want to say anything about this one uh okay brief revision right brief summary so close position so use our kind of strategic vision are think not how to play but where to play play where you are stronger Yes, it requires some strategic vision ability to see plans of both sides. Uh, play where you're stronger, right? Try to find the most energetic ways to proceed with your with your positional plans. Time is important in positional play as well. And the final point is that in our just learn to care about your opponent's ideas, which is very the most are. One of the most important aspects of positional play, and definitely the most advanced aspect of positional play for young players. They're very strong finding their own ideas, but they do not care enough about opponent's ideas, which is a very common situation. And it's absolutely okay normally, right? Mm -hmm. We should learn to play actively. We should learn to uh, to see our own ideas, and, and that's absolutely correct. But the stronger you are, the more you should care about your opponent's ideas. You should develop this skill. Fantastic. Okay. Let's move on. So let's we have the next one. This one is between Alexander Alekhine and Akiba Rubinstein. Two again amazing players. I, I like how Alexander you've uh, made and it's black to play. You you've chosen positions of your students and then some very legendary players of the past. Yeah, I'm just, uh, it is coincidence. I'm just trying to find examples which are strategically very clean mm. and, uh, okay, not so difficult uh, so that we can rely more on intuition rather than calculation. Right. And I think that's, I love this example, which is, uh, again, a lot about uh, intuition more than uh, of course. No, okay, we I, have I can't a little bit of that. My chat is actually able to find these moves so quickly. I mean, I, I, I... okay, maybe it's all your students who have come here somehow. <laughs> yeah, there are many. <laughs> there are many. <laughs> but but I can't I can't. Uh, I mean, the the move here is not at all simple, guys. Black to play, uh, and also what's the move? So so, but again, I try to apply already. Uh, the ideas we uh, we have discussed. You can say, oh my God, so many ideas were there, how to apply them. And yes, uh, you're absolutely right. That's why to improve your positional play, it takes it takes years and years. And it is about moving step by step. Mm -hmm. So you should... Um, okay. no, it's, an, it's a very big topic, you know, how to how to learn and how to how to improve your chess, right? It's a very, very big topic. Right. We have no time for that now. But what I see that two moves we have... are mainly considered here, bishop g6 and d4. These are the two moves that have been recommended. And yes, so what is the main point in this position, right? So try to write in your comments, sir. Uh, how, what, what do you feel is the main uh -huh. point in this position? Why do you make this move? It's very, very important to explain why you make your move. Right. So write down so, the reason. And those who have said Bishop G6, you can write down your reason. Those who have said D4, write down your reason. And this time we haven't revealed yet what is the right answer. So. Uh, okay. So let's. You know, uh, Alexander, a lot of people are saying that we want to exchange this strong bishop. Nisha Mohota says white wants f4, f5. So she's playing against that. Um, Absolutely correct. And that's what I said. Apply their 
ideas we have already discussed, uh, which uh, would, would be easier for more advanced players, definitely. So uh, just in this live stream, I want to, uh, you know, or to show you what you should improve generally in positional play. There are so many aspects, of course, so many things, so many ideas, but uh, I believe that uh, there are more advanced players that are able to apply them and learn uh, from these uh, live stream very quickly. Right. And of course, what is the main point? You can see that in these are uh, very typical uh, open uh, rube, uh, uh, open variation of Rui Lopez. Uh, White has pawn majority on their king side. And I do not remember exactly. Maybe knight f3 to h2 was the last move, which okay. creates a very clear threat like you can see that white's plan is a four a five and even the bishop on h5 is is can be uh, a big object for attack and as a very important point if we analyze pawn structure we can understand that our pawns are mostly on the light squares and blacks uh, so and the white pawns are mostly on the dark squares and it gives you a clear idea which bishops you need to exchange, what bishops you need to preserve. So, of course, uh, your better bishop is a dark squared bishop. Your opponent's better bishop is a light squared bishop. So, analyzing pawn structure, you can understand what pieces to exchange, what pieces to preserve. And bishop g6 is a multi-purpose move. It is not only great exchange, but it is also very a very nice example for profil access. Mm. So, and uh, we should hurry with this move. Yes. And, and Bishop by the way, Alexander, if they play d4, then still f4 would be very strong, right? Because this does nothing. I mean, why does Yes. I, it seems uh, Bishop e2 is there, it seems, right? Maybe oh, it's Bishop actually. E2. Oh, Bishop e2. Uh, okay, d4 is a tricky move, which requires lots of calculation. Mm. Of course, it's not easy to say. Uh, but now I see that c6 square, c6 knight is hanging. Be careful. Maybe there are some ideas like bishop e4 might be there. Oh, bishop e4. Yeah. This so, is and much that's better. it's becoming risky nice. actually, right? Nice. Now queen d7 and... and then maybe f4 now. Okay. Nice. Maybe like this. Nice. Yeah. And this is becoming extremely dangerous. I'm not sure what is this evaluation, but it looks very dangerous, right? Right. Again, pawn on d5 is restricting opponents' minor pieces. So, that's what I said. Play with your pawn skillfully mm. to make your pieces happy, your opponent's pieces unhappy. And move d4 has clear drawback. Bishop g6 is a great move, which is by far the best move in this position. Let's move on. Dix. And that's a nice example, actually, as well. So uh, Rubinstein played... Which pawn Hitler. to take with, right? Yeah. No, okay. If you ask this question, and it is not beginner's class then everyone would understand right <laughs> that there is something special about this move yes and uh, rubinstein is recapturing this pawn f which is really nice move what is the point so it is it is a great move from uh you know with this move you're able to open file f file for the rook after short castle our rook will be playing from its initial position Mm. Uh, so, and also, it is a great move uh, to kind of neutralize a pawn, pawn majority on the king side because now to make a four, g four, a five plan would be much, much more difficult right. uh, to make it work. Right. So, and that's a great move. Let's see the game. Yeah. Okay. Let's see the game. And knight f3 was played, and again, we want to give you some diagram, yes, some time for this position. Black to play, you have two three minutes for intuitive decision. Two, you know, uh, Alexander, you're giving them two three minutes, they are taking two three seconds to answer. Okay, it. <laughs> see, it's another extreme, so please take your time, okay? Yeah, take your time. Take your time, guys. It's okay if your name doesn't feature in the top 10 in the list. As long as you are learning out of this and understanding this, it's good enough for you. Uh, so don't rush. Uh, 
especially in your training process, it's very, very important to do everything very consciously. You cannot apply general principles if you are doing so fast, you know. Intuition is a good thing, but try to do as much as possible things very consciously, at least in your training process, mm -hmm. so that uh, you can maybe speed up in your tournament game and sub situations, but in your training process, try to do everything slowly enough, just trying to apply those general principles consciously, because your task is to develop those skills. And it requires a great discipline and concentration, numerous, numerous repetition. Right. Well, we can look at what are the answers given here. We have a lot of people who want to sacrifice the rook with on F3. So Sherlock, Kapil, Aruna, Dede Baushnik, Devi Prasad, Atrinjai, Nitik. Well done, guys. And actually, I my Congress, you are playing stronger than the great Akiba Rubinstein because, you know, uh, Akiba Rubinstein missed this great opportunity in the game. And uh, he played the same move a little bit later, but already here, he could have punished uh, Ali Hain for very careless knight of three move. And what is this move? I can say it is our no, okay, it is mostly positional exchange sacrifice, but it has very our big position, uh, very our uh, what is the positional ground behind this exchange sacrifice? You know, positional play it is first of all about long term factors, right? What kind of long term factors? Uh, pawn structure is one of them, right? It's very big long term positional factor is pawn structure. And here, our pawns are responsible for the king's safety, right? And here, you can destroy a pawn's king shelter very badly. So, and the king, the white king would be weak, are in the middle game with queens on the board till the end of the game. And so it is like black is getting a longer our long lasting initiative, mm. long lasting initiatives that we can develop by positional means. You don't need to calculate line steal the end, sacrificing an exchange like that. And that's sometimes the most difficult part for young players. They're trying to calculate lines till the very end, finding some it is absolutely wrong. Mm. So this you should. That this is where positional understanding would help you to sacrifice like material more positionally, mm. understanding uh, understanding long term factors like position of king, bone structure, and another very important thing is that relative value of pieces, right? Like in this case, uh, black has very clear evolution, very clear plan. Bishop d6, knight g6, and knight will come to f4. And such great knight on f4 can be stronger than a rook, mm. right? We should feel a relative value of pieces. Nice. Such great knight on f4, that's what we are mostly discussing in my course about the secrets of dynamic play. Mm. But of course, those ideas are applicable for positional play as well. And that's actually absolutely crushing initiative white is absolutely helpless to prevent black's plan bishop d6 knight g6 knight f4 and there are so many black white is unable to bring his pieces to defend his king purely positional sacrifice yes it can be calculated till the end probably but it is not required right right and you know if you play blitz if you play rapid so you should take it <laughs> like like as well, if many players are playing open Sicilian as white or black, and you know rook c3 typical right. sacrifice is absolutely the same typical pattern. Yes, very cool. Uh, and uh, we learned a lot about uh, relative value because when we are growing up and learning chess, we are taught that rook is five, bishop and knight are three, and then it fits into our head and we are always very careful giving up material, but... When you become better players, you have to break free from that shackles. Yes. 
So, and actually, this is what Rubenstein missed, but uh, let's see the game. Uh, so, Queen D7, and it is un it is unbelievable how weak our Ali Heinz, our sense of danger, was in this game. Twice he gives his opponent this great opportunity to sacrifice on F3, and finally, Rubinstein does it, Rook F3, and, uh, and now it is even much stronger because Black has an extra tempo compared to the previous line. And after Queen E2, right, so let's show this line a little bit faster how the game finished, Knight G6, and absolutely just crushing. Yeah. Just, in, just piece improvement, you see, just improving the pieces. Why are uh, why peace improvement is so important? Like you can develop your attack by positional means, right? Ca attacking chess, it is not only about calculation, it is also about peace improvement. It is also about exchange of the key defenders. So, and it is also about uh, getting all, coordinating all your pieces. Those general principles are the same. Mm. So in positional play or in when playing in attack. Brilliant. Okay. Very nicely uh, done this. Uh, should we go to the next one? Yes. I think it's time to move to the next. Okay. This one is one by your student who's white, Shivan yeah. Khosla, who went on to become an IM. And his opponent is a GM, Almeida. And this is at Andorra Open. 13 years ago. Black to play, guys. So, it is my second Indian student that's playing. Oh, second. <laughs> After Parimarjan Negi, yes? No, my third. So, Parimarjan Negi, Sidraman, and uh, Shivan was the third. Okay. So, what would you play here as black? That's maybe the most advanced example so far. That's why, please, no rush. Yes. No rush. Try to understand the position. Try to feel the main point. It's really, really more advanced than before, I believe. So, that's why. Take your time. You should spend three, three minutes for sure. Three minutes, at least. yes. Okay. At Brilliant. least, yeah. Because... Uh, this position requires i would say step by step thinking so just mm -hmm. to understand different factors very interesting uh, that you guys should take time at the right moment uh, and not rush into it so if you if the first instinct that you have may be right or wrong but uh, now you will get to know when you have thought more and when the answer is said whether your first instinct was correct so try to think more it is definitely so called critical moment where having so many options black has to choose how to proceed further so alexander can i show you what our chat has uh, the moves that they have recommended Okay, let's have a look. So we have bishop oh my God. d8, knight c5, bishop f8, c5, and bishop c5. So these are the few moves that are being spoken about. Okay, I, I do not say what is the best move so far, but I see that, yes, we are thinking, many people are thinking in the right direction at least. Mm -hmm. So, and again, my favorite question, what is the main point in this position? Yes, why are you making the move that you are making? Please do mention. So try, explain our, what is behind your move. Why do you play your move? What do you feel about this position? They, uh, so I'll read out a few. Other Saraswat says e5 is weak, so bishop f8, bishop g7. Nitik Reddy says bishop d8 to go to bishop b6 and activate the bishop. Shank Where to go with the bishop? Bishop d8, bishop b6 to bishop activate b6. the bishop. What is, what is the point of keeping the bishop to b6, Nitik? Mm -hmm. Playing d4 with idea 95, maybe. Mm, maybe. 
Maybe. Okay. Savita Chess says knight c5 to exchange white's good bishop. Nisha okay. says pawn on e5 looks weak. Um, Funny Chan says bishop d8 with a lot of people have actually said bishop d8 with the idea of bishop b6. They want to put their bishop on that diagonal. Okay. Okay, so that's why I'm asking you to explain your point because sometimes a very good move can be played with not so good idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. So. So from this, and, okay. I realize that uh, the right move is Bishop D8. Is it true? Yes, and but okay, let's discuss what is this position about, right? Because okay. in fact, yes, this is definitely the most. Uh, mm, difficult the most challenging position among those we have already discussed today because there are many different factors are uh, uh i think it's very clear and you should see that our if you evaluate the pawn structure you can see that pawn on e5 is weak right uh another important thing you can see that our black species are better at the moment right so black species all black species are playing while uh, there is a big drawback in the white camp, right? What is the white's worst piece? So please write down in the chat. Mm. What is the white's worst piece? That's very important to analyze your opponent's piece placement, right? Because sometimes mm -hmm. you have a short term advantage and you should hurry to act energetically to exploit your short term advantage, right? Mm. So rook on a2, uh, everyone is saying rook on a2 is misplaced yes. and it is absolutely correct. So black should try to play energetically here to make use of opponent's misplaced rook. And so we need to attack pawn on e5 somehow. And the question is, how? Do, what is the most precise way to attack the e5 pawn? There are a few ways. One idea is to get the bishop to g7. Another idea is to get the bishop to c7. Another idea is to play something like our c5 followed by d4, or maybe even bishop c5 followed by d4, right? So, and or, or bishop d8, bishop b6, which they said, and then d4. With idea d4, right? Yeah. But first of all, you should understand that the white has two bishops, and you should be extremely careful to are, you know, you should use your pawns to restrict opponent's bishops. At the moment, your central pawns are perfectly placed on the light squares to restrict your opponent's light squared bishop. That's why move d4 is positionally extremely, extremely uh, committing, and I would say uh, absolutely wrong, because the, the d5 pawn is doing amazing job to restrict their d3 bishop in this position. That's mm -hmm. why our task is to win the e5 pawn, preserving our pawns on the light squares, right? So, and you can show bishop c5 line. Yes. Bishop c5, mm -hmm. I think I gave this line. c5, rook a1, d4. d4, this, bishop d2. And we win the pawn, but... Uh... but yeah, now wise pieces, wise bishops are doing amazingly well. Are like the pawn structure, black's pawn structure is very committed, and white has lots of counterplay. Bishop f4, just uh, white has definitely full compensation for the pawn in this case, right? right? So, as I said, play with your pawns skillfully to make your pieces happy and opponent's pieces unhappy, so use your pawns to restrict your opponent's pieces. Mm -hmm. The question is where to go with the bishop, to c7 or g7 and why? What is the difference between those two moves? Ooh, that's a deep Can you, question. That's a deep question and it's really advanced one. What is the difference between our bishop on c7 and bishop on g7? Just explain, please. Yeah. Guys, which one would you prefer and why? Uh... And which yes, is better, I please? see Shan Kodip, Lahiru, Adarsh, Kunter. The main point is that, as I said, you remember I said you should look for mounter purpose squares for mm. your pieces. So you should mm. try to combine your attacking and prophylactical functions. Like you should notice that there is a weakness in your camp as well, which is pawn a5. 
and the bishop on c7 is doing a great multi-purpose job not only attacking the e5 pawn but but protecting the a5 pawn as well and this is the difference between the placement of the bishop on c7 and g7 and bishop d8 was played in the game wow so let's see bishop d8 white is using actually i did not introduce a very important and very must know general principle about peace improvement of course all my students know very well it is called the principle of forced peace right mm -hmm. so uh, this is the most efficient way to improve your pieces you should ask yourself the question what is my worst piece right because if you improve first your worst piece right uh, you improve your pieces the most flexible and the most efficient way because usually the other pieces are doing at least something or they have some options to be improved. Like in this case, rook a1 is, this is a nice application of this principle, bishop c7. Let's see, rook e1. And actually white is on time to protect pawn e5. Because uh, if we cannot capture now non e5, because white is getting sufficient counterplay, white is co like suddenly it is white who is taking over the initiative. White piece is already better coordinated, right? And that's why in the game, black is going rook of eight. And now, where mm -hmm. the bishop on c7 is doing amazing job, the rook is not tied down with defense of the a5 pawn and we can activate the rook and that was a really amazing game by grandmaster almeida let's show a little bit faster the rook of eight so i would say perfect game from peace improvement point of view yeah there That's is a, little... a moment should we ask them yeah okay we can give a little bit of time guys black to play what did grandmaster almeida do here <clears throat> Again, probably quite advanced example, but try. Check your intuition. Yeah, black to play. I I can give a hint to the people who were watching my stream yesterday uh, because I was commentating on the match between Nihal Sarin and MVL. Uh, so think like Nihal Sarin does many times. You know, he, he does this very often. So what is this part of the game on the board, right? So what do we know about? There are no queens on the board. So we have just finished our the third part of my break screw course with many students uh, who I see now in the chat. Uh -huh. And it it was uh, about endgame. So, and I will check how you have improved. <laughs> okay. So, guys, uh, right now, uh, Alexander, the moves that are being mentioned here are King G7, King F7, H5, Rook F2, C5, so, so many different options. Yeah, and okay. Objectively speaking, it is a very advanced position and the, the best move is not so obvious and maybe not even so clear from engine point of view, actually. Mm. But yes, uh, there is no... Uh, there is no uh, we cannot improve the rook so far because after rook f3, bishop f3, the rook... There is, the rook might be simply trapped, you know? Okay. Uh, but, yeah... No, maybe maybe we can play something like c5, but okay. Oh my god, what about bishop d5? Yeah, this is what we discussed. So far, advanced passer can be a huge tactical motive, and then suddenly <laughs> there is no way to stop the ball. Wow. Black and white is getting huge counterattacks. So be careful with your opponent's mm -hmm. ideas, right. And the pawn on c6 does a amazing job to restrict the opponent's light squared bishop, right? Mm. So, and bishop d4 is threatening. So, uh, that's why actually the king the king should play. Yeah? And the grandmaster played king f7, getting the king to a7, which is by far the best square for the king in this endgame. King f7, bishop g4. This is what was played. Yeah, it's a very complex position, but we will go a little bit faster. 
Uh, and finally, Black won the game. The game is really complex and uh, so not the most important. The most important points we have already discussed in this game. And what is the most important lesson we can learn from this game is that definitely about uh, how important to look for our multi-purpose squares for your pieces. So you should remember about your active plans, in this case, attacking the E5 pawn, but you should also remember about your opponent's ideas and you should use prophylactical thinking. So the bishop on C7 is doing amazing job combining two things, attacking and pre -pro protecting, yeah? Preventing opponent's ideas at the same time. Brilliant. So let's move to the next example. The, the principle of force peace, right, is also very mm. important to remember about. One of the major skills about peace improvement. So just always ask yourself, are, what is my worst piece? What is the ideal square for my pieces? Those questions are the key questions to improve your our skills, ability to improve your pieces, which is a lot about one of the major our positional play skills, definitely. Let's move on. Let's go to the next one here. This one is white to play here uh, between Alexei Bezgodov and Alaukin here. Uh, what would you play here as white? Is it white or black? White to play, yeah. yeah white to play. The very known Karakan classical Middle game, yeah, it is called Karakan grip, the pawn on a bones or an h5 and e5. Ah, Karakan grip. Oh, I never knew. Okay, so these pawns. So I won so many games as white in this middle game and end game. Mm. I now remember, you know, uh, when, when I played some of your students, they would get this structure and maybe they, they knew exactly how to play in these uh, positions. Be. Yeah, because uh, this is a lot about our learning typical middle game and even typical end game ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's very typical structure where you can know the ideas very well, and it's easy to play if you know those ideas. Okay, so guys, what should be the move? Try to think on your own. Don't try to use engines. Don't try to look at the game that is there. You know, if yeah. you think on your own, that's how you improve. Otherwise, you stay of in that. Of course. Yeah, that's I always uh, uh, give an example of uh, Gukish. I don't know how, how much it is true, but I always say, see, uh, Gukish uh, never used his uh, engine before he became Grandmaster. Yeah. I don't know whether it's it true. is truth. It's true. Uh, and it is amazing, actually. I think it should uh, motivate and encourage all young players not to use engine. Yes. And yeah. to develop uh, the brain ability to to develop our the, uh, uh, intuition, understanding, ability to analyze on the all. Brilliant. Okay, uh, let's have a look at what our chat has come up with. Uh, 19 to 20 people have mentioned C4, Nitik, Yeshuraj, Anirban, Saraswati, Shaumik, De Dabaushnik, Devi Prasad, Shubh and Daivik. They've all gone for the move C4. What is the main point of this move? Please are, uh, use your chance to give me your detailed comment it would be much more valuable if you give the right move but also you explain properly the idea behind your move it would be much much more valuable hmm. guys do write down we have now after this only two more positions left so give your best give your 100 percent it's not every day that you get a chance to learn the secrets of positional play from one of the best trainers in the world. So try to figure out what would you play and why are you doing and learn. So what is the point behind move C4? Actually, <clears throat> let's have uh, some comments. So <clears throat> P says C4 knight B4 king B1. My idea is to go knight E4 and bishop F8 is bad. 
Then Adya Gupta says stops black c4 and after this knight e4, knight d6 comes. Uh, yes, and again, that's a nice example of our, you know, thinking about our own ideas and uh, thinking about opponent's ideas as well. Because if, like, okay, just put the pawn back to c2 and let's have a look at this position. Let's this what try to, let's try to fill the main points in this position. So I think you notice that one pair of bishops has been exchanged. There are no light squares on, uh, bishops on the board, and that's why it's quite easy to understand how to play with your pawns, right? And how we should use so-called Capablanca's rule, right? Mm -hmm. So I I heard the story. Capablanca was very lazy guy, so he used to exchange one pair of bishops so that he would know how to play how to play with his pawns. Yeah. <laughs> it is very ah, smart, very practical approach. I, I I didn't know this. Uh, so yeah. he would exchange one bishop. So whatever is left, he would put the pawns on the opposite color of that bishop. Yeah, and oh. he was positionally much stronger than all his uh, opponents that time. So that's nice. why his strategy works very well. <laughs> very cool. I, I don't know how, how much of truth in that, but it sounds nice. <laughs> yes. And actually, Capablanca's rule says uh, plays are play uh, like place your pawns are to their cover squares opposite to the bishops uh, left on the board, right? right? So we have the dark squared bishops on the board, and playing move c4, we're able to fix the opponent's pawn on c5, uh, making opponent's bishop passive, and also the c5 pawn is going to be another weakness in the long run and their positional play it is about a longer time a long-term thinking right yeah. as we will see that c5 pawn is going to be another weakness mm -hmm. uh, so and actually very important to mention that in this karakan grip middle game and especially in end game the pawn on h5 is doing amazing job fixing the g7 and h6 pawns which are potentially objects for attack right Right. And again, if we ask us our if we ask ourselves about opponent's ideas, we can understand that black is going to apply Capablanca's rule and c5, c4 ah. is a positional threat. So if we go here this, then c5. And now the d5 knight is great, Ooh. the bishop is doing great, and black is getting lots of counterplay in this middle game. Nice. Very nice. So that's why move c4 is very strong and very typical in this middle game and end game. Again, like we should value our dark squared bishop. It's very important piece to exploit g7 and h6 weaknesses. So our plan is very clear. And let's see the game. And actually here, black is making a very typical mistake. Even grandmasters do not understand this middle game properly. Uh, my students, I can recall my game against our uh, uh, which we studied in one of their classes about our uh, same color bishop, my game against one. Oh my god, I forgot the name. Uh, they understand. Uh, uh, maybe some... they, maybe someone from them might tell the name of the. Oh the yeah, you can uh, you can tell me <laughs> the name. I forgot. <laughs> you are young. <laughs> uh, that was um, uh, some about twenty five hundred flares. Uh, please help me. Help your coach to recall the name of the player. Mm. But, uh, but so this, this uh, while they are saying it, with this structure on the king side is very very favorable for white. Yes, because this there are always chances of creating a passer. Yeah, and actually very important to know that exchange of queens in this are uh, in this pawn structure favors white because. Uh, White is getting much better prospects of his king and very, very clear plan to proceed. Mm -hmm. So uh, the black king is Panarin. Yes, that, that's Panarin. a game against Panarin. So, and uh, some of my students recalled this game. So yeah. great. Thank you so much. And it's very important to remember names of players. Mm. It's very, very helpful. You know, it works like the key to to open bigger amount wow. of information, right? 
if you remember names, you can recall the rest. So, Got it. so uh, when I say go a shop of Panarin, you should immediately recall these endgame and many ideas we have discussed. Mm. So, and let's see. Now we have lots of weaknesses. Are the pawns on b6, c5, pawn g7, h6, and uh, all those factors make this endgame very difficult for black. And usually, it's usually white is winning very soon. It was actually a mistake to capture on f5 because the pawn e6 was amazing pawn to restrict the Maybe white so. king to restrict the white oh, king the and king. bishop, right? Black yeah. should have tried to hold this pawn structure, but I think still the position is very, very difficult and maybe even already lost. Hmm. So take, take, he maneuvers his pieces quietly. And the, yeah, sides. so we can see the principle of two weaknesses. White is combining playing on both flanks and, and that's uh, not that's is... amazing game yeah what yeah. happened or he resigned I think, I think yeah here the game is only till this point i maybe he resigned or maybe i do not have the game to the end but this position is lost actually so Correct. the white pieces are dominating and there uh, so the the white would penetrate very soon somehow right okay. what can we learn from this game definitely this is a great example about capo blanca's rule so uh when one pair of bishops is left on the board. You should immediately recall Capoblanca rule so that you know how to play with your pawns, right? Mm -hmm. What is the point behind Capoblanca's rule? Uh, keep place your pawns to the squares opposite, uh, on their cover squares opposite to the bishops. This way, you're able to make your bishop active, opponent's bishop passive. Are you able to fix weaknesses in the opponent's camp, right? And you can simply control more squares, which is a very important part. All right. OK, brilliant. And as a very important thing, I can say that uh, it is about how to study, how to approach to your opening preparation. So mm. opening preparation, it's not only about uh, learning lines, but you should you should study model games. So this is definitely one of the greatest model game I have seen in this are middle game and end game, right? Got so it. it's very, very important part of opening preparation to study model games, to study typical ideas. Right. Okay, let's go to the next one. This is a classic perhaps, Gligorich versus Matulovich. It's white to play, yes? think uh, white has the move please no rush this is really advanced example no rush take three minutes at least for okay like three minutes we are not going to show the chat so that you would not get distracted Mm, okay. This is really and this is really a quite challenging position even for very strong players. And again, try to explain the point. Why do you play your move? What is the idea behind the move? Give a short line and give our yes. positional explanation of this move as well. Don't just give one move. Try to answer a little bit more in depth why you're choosing that move so i guess there are a few answers i think a lot of people have been in fact uh, i won't show it but two moves are being played almost. yes our two moves are that both are coming in mind quite quickly yes but one of them is much stronger Okay, so the moves that have been mentioned here, Alexander, if I can show you. Should I? Yes. Uh, is rook c5 and e5 also. Yeah, and that's very important to mention that we have two people who played a five and actually yes. 
uh, we should learn not only from great examples, but we should learn from typical mistakes as well. Mm -hmm. Like move of five in this position is a very serious positional mistake. What is the point behind this mistake? Of course, it breaks our Capo Blanca's rule a lot. You can see <laughs> we have the light squared bishop and you put all your pawns on the light squares, which means your bishop is getting even worse and you are not able to control the dark squares anymore. So there is a huge weakness on e5 so that from maybe queen e7 will be played and black is going to occupy this great square. That's, of course, a very bad positional mistake. It's very important to avoid playing such a uh, bad positionally bad moves yeah this is okay. very important to know and yes uh we need to choose between move e5 and rook c5 what is better here uh like uh what about move e5 actually there is a looks the move e5 is actually quite interesting and probably the second move, best move in this position but black has a great, a really wonderful idea to create very powerful counterplay Hmm. And what is this idea? It's really, really... You can't take, right? Because you lose a piece. So yeah. you have to think of something else here to do. Uh, it is really advanced. Maybe just international master level or at least... Uh... Hmm. So black to play. Please give me a line. When you play 93, you know... Even beginner can play ninety three, but uh... <laughs> write write the full line, guys. If you can find the full. So yeah. many people say ninety three, and that's all. Okay, and what? Ansh Bhargav says knight d three, queen d three, and queen. F2. That's the same move by Anirban Mundal. Uh, Acid Ghost says knight d3, queen d3, de. Uh, Shankadeep says knight d3, queen d3, de, rook c7, queen f2. Um, uh -huh. So take, take. And I think the two moves which have been mentioned are to take on e5 and queen f2. Yeah, I think capturing only five has a big drawback because white is able to create a passer very quickly and maybe simply d6 is extremely strong. So just pushing the pawn and this pawn is going to be extremely strong. Mm. Because it is not only about the pawn, but yes, I hope you still remember what is the main point behind playing on open file. And uh, so the, the d6 pawn is only one, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, weakness in black scam but there is another weakness because after rook c7 that the f7 square is will become a huge target for attack as well and usually such positions are not holdable white has total domination here right of course it's still quite tricky but uh the best move in this position is not capturing on e5 but as you some of you correctly mentioned queen f2 is a brilliant move so first of all, uh, the rook c7 is not coming with the tempo anymore. And also queen f2 is quite safe. Uh, just such a queen in opponent's uh, camp, uh, which cannot be trapped, is, can be very annoying, actually, right? right? And it attacks those pawns, and rook d8 is maybe next move. And uh, OK, position is quite tricky and not without counterplay from for black. Yeah, And the position is. Uh, not it is less clear, at least uh, compared to what was played in the game. Let's move to the game continuation. As uh, many of you played, rook c5 is a great positional sacrifice. What is the point behind this sacrifice? And a great example about pawn play. So, and uh, what we need to know about pawn play is our uh, like. Our dream from pawn play point of view can be to get pawn general advance when we have pawn mass, or as I say, pawn general advance are those are pawns which are connected and they are moving, supported by the pieces 
and really hard to blockade such pawns. Yeah, mm. this is what Nimsovich says. Uh, look for uh, not for mobility of your every pawn separately, but look for pawn general advance. Yes, look for mm. pawn mass general Going advance. Together. So this is right and. It's very, it's sometimes it's easy to blockade isolated passport, right? Yes. But it's very hard to blockade when the pawns are connected and they are really strongly supported by the pieces. And it's a great example, nice classical example about pawn general advance. By the way, I put a little bit back. There is a very nice, a very nice, very typical situation to understand why are these exchange sacrifice is so strong, yeah? It's a very important hint about exchange sacrifice because, uh, again, still many people are trying to calculate till then, which is, of course, wrong. Uh, exchange sacrifice can be really strong when you're, uh, when there are no open files for your opponent's rooks. Then your minor piece can be at least not weaker, but sometimes even stronger than your opponent's passive rook. Yeah, You can see there are no open files. And both black rooks are very passive, while the bishop on c4 actually blockading square, which is not available for opponent's rooks, is going to be extremely strong. Okay, let's move a little bit further. And this is complete domination, and the final move is nice. So breakthrough just involving opponent's king Ooh, and just... Really nice. Now the rook coming in, and this is hanging. Kind of the principle of two weaknesses, right? The d7 is one weakness, but we involve opponent's king, and mate is coming by force, right? Okay. Yes, hanging and knight over. is coming. Wow. Yeah. yeah, really brilliant classical example about our pawn play, about positional exchange sacrifice, and about relative value of pieces. We saw the bishop force even probably stronger than opponent's rook in this game. Right, right. So, okay, let's move. Last one the... for the day. Yeah, the last I position. Can... The last, actually, we will see the whole game. I. It is a simple game, but at the same time, I was very happy. This is my game. And I was, uh, I was a young international master playing this game, not even grandmaster yet. Okay. So and black, black to, play, to play. So you are you are black here, guys. Try to think what did Alexander do here? It's one of his games, so we saved uh, his game for the last. Uh, and because uh, it's really valuable, you know, to to uh, to study those games played by the original player because you can learn about thinking process is the best, right? That's why study. Are their great games annotated by the players, the great players who played those games? Right. They can share the whole thinking process behind the moves. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have, guys, think a bit. We have a couple of ideas which are being shared here. I think three ideas. Again, it's quite a tricky position because, you, again, if you uh, if you go for some dynamic operations, uh, you should a concrete approach is absolutely required. You know, you should feel when you play a really responsible committing move, then calculation concrete approach is absolutely required. Hmm. When you change pawn structure, for example, or you play some responsible attacking move, or you sacrifice material, of course, such. I, I call dynamic operations require more concrete approach and precise calculation. When you play a positional move, improving your pieces, okay, it can be done faster. And uh, for such moves, you can spend less time. Yes. Okay, so the moves that have been suggested here are knight a7, f6, and a4. These are the three main moves which have been mentioned uh, for black. Okay, let's start with move a4, which I feel are a wrong move because actually 
as I said, play skillfully with your pieces to make your pieces happy, opponent's pieces unhappy. I guess with this move, you simply help your opponent because B4 looks like an automatic move to play. Though maybe actually it has some point behind, even behind move A4, there is some point, I mm -hmm. guess. I understood what is behind this move. The drawback of this move is that pawn A3 is not hanging anymore and white is able to are white is able to use his a1 rook yeah it's really great when your piece is when your such important piece like a rook is tied with defense of a pawn right that's why i don't really like move a4 okay i like to keep our pawn a3 hanging so that white is has to take care of this rook right practically i do not like Mm. Another move, which is of six, it again, it is very responsible, dynamic operation. You are changing pawn structure, and actually, you create some weaknesses in your camp, right? And that's these type of dynamic operations require very precise calculation because actually, you're missing a great counterattacking. Okay, bishop is seven, and why? Oh, I gave you a hint, right? <laughs> right uh, yes, I. I gave you a hint, but okay, still try to find. Mm. Ah, you give the hint by marking. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I should have removed it, but okay. It's what no, do you maybe play? you should have given the position before g5. Ah, okay. That would be more, more instructive for strong players. So, but still. It is still quite challenging for most of our students today. And I see that not everyone got the point. Yeah, more, many does. of them just want to sacrifice Bishop H7. <laughs> very aggressive players. Very aggressive. Very dangerous. But the ones who have mentioned uh, Queen B1, they are... P, Gita, Devi Prasad, Suja, Nisha, Daivik, Riddhima, Sherlock, Hunter, and Nitik. Yeah, I agree. We need to calculate Bishop H7. But you go, you know, if you play Bishop H7, then definitely you would need you'd need you need more time to calculate because giving peace, you know. Yes. That okay, because there is no forest line, right? You can move your knight with idea queen h5, but black gets time, you know? It is very complex calculation, and or, mm. and actually it looks even slow to me because I think black can play bishop e8 or g6. I guess I think it's a little bit slow. Okay. So I think it's a little bit slow. What I want to say, again, you can play faster positional moves, but when you sacrifice material, you should calculate lines precisely. Mm. And you, you should check your opponent's candidate moves properly, because especially if it is not absolutely forced line. But queen b1 is actually more positional move, just improving the piece and uh, threatening bishop h7. And there is no move g6 because of uh, at least perpetual check will be there, right? And right. it's a great achievement because initially black's position was better. Mm. And that's achievement for white. So let's move our to their game. So the move that was played in the game was... And most of you played the best move, which was played in the game. Knight a7, just purely position away. Mm. Purely position away. Uh, white doesn't have much counter play on the king side because I can always play g6 under rock solid pawn structure. With no dark squared bishop on the board, white is unable to exploit their weakness of dark squares, right? right? That's why I can play where I'm stronger. The same general principle. See, knight a7. The threat is uh, many threats. Rook c3, knight b5, or bishop b5. There are so many ideas. My opponent is playing move a4. And of course, uh, the reason behind this move is understandable. Pawn a3 is not hanging anymore. And white is trying to cover the b5 square. But of course, it has a big positional drawback. b4 square is becoming weak. Rook c3, it's time to grab the only open file. Again, very important thing. If there is only one open file, f file is semi closed, actually. Yeah, it's not open yet. 
the only open file has extremely important, right? Why? Because if you're able to grab the only open file, your rooks are dominating while the opponent's rooks are passive, right? That's why the only open file has great strategic importance and I'm on time to grab the control over the C file. Let's move on. Bishop B8, very nice move, see. I have total already kind of total domination, but, and actually I understand that my opponent doesn't have any real or much counterplay, but I just make one uh, prophylactical move so that protecting over protecting F7 square. So there is no counterplay at the moment. Mm. And it's very important to understand that it is really hard for white to make a move in this position. And that's is the, ne the next move, I think, right? This yes. is a diagram, right? Yes. Black and this is a this is a move I was very very happy and very proud of, and I want to give you time for the next position for this position. Guys, what would you do here as black? It's slightly tough move. Yes, here. that's this is uh, grandmaster level already. So at the end we have, of course. Uh, mm. Maybe not... the grandmaster thinking, I would say. Uh, maybe the move is not so difficult, but what I see, I, there I see people play this move. So again, explain the idea behind this move. Yes. I see many people play this move, but I think two moves that are very, very uh, like a lot of people are mentioning. One is Knight to c6. I think they want to go here. And the other one is uh, Queen d8, a backward move. And both moves are very logical. And both moves definitely are what the main point of my thinking process during the game. And uh, so I played the move, which I feel the practically are very strong. First of all, practically in such situations. But what is this situation? Let's uh, let's try to understand what is the situation. Black is much better. I hope it is clear. Uh, so, like if you look at the pawn structure, you can see that there are many weaknesses in the white camp. Our black black pieces are much more active. Our we control the C file. Our so the dark squares are weak. Are in white camp on the queen side, on the king side. The king is exposed as well, which is another very important long-term factor. And another very important thing that it's really hard for white to make a move, right? But with move queen f2, white kind of created small idea. And in such type of dominating position, uh, even such small ideas are better to prevent in order to, you know, to make your opponent feel completely desperate. It is, it is first of all, by psychology. When you stop opponent's counterplay, yes, probably you know how desperate it feels with no counterplay in a very, in a bad position. Mm. It's, it feels so that in such situations, your opponent might, having no good moves, he might play something stupid so that you would win the game much faster and much easier with no counterplay. Knight c6 I didn't like so much because after knight c6 I didn't like bishop b5. And now my knight is pinned. I cannot move my knight because f7. My bishop e8 is very important defender. And that's a problem. So that's why I'm playing first queen d8. My queen, there is nothing much to do for the queen on the queen side. I play a very nice prophylactical move, stopping any kind of counterplay with h4, g5, and getting better control over the weak dark squares on their king side. A really great move. And this is, uh, you know, uh, in, in the style of uh, 
Karp of Petrasan, whatever great positional player you can recall, right? Right. Nowadays, of course, obviously every every strong player knows uh, the pra- the great practical strengths of such quiet moves mm. in our such dominating positions. Yeah. So now we can see the queen retreated to e2. H6, by the way, I'm playing another move, prophylactical move. So I know that sometimes our back rank issue might be our back rank might be an issue in some complications, right? So I'm just saying, okay, let's have my pawn on h6 so that in some complications my king is safe. Okay, let's move on. And now knight c6 is working much better because bishop b5 is not that it's not that effective, right? I will play this. And this is penetration. Finally, my rook penetrates to the second rank. And that's total domination. I will penetrate with all my pieces. Let's see the game. Queen up three, knight b4. And yeah, and I think this is the a, final a, position. The final diagram. No, there's, there's one more. This yeah, is the second maybe. last. The second last, so okay, guys. What do you, you can do see that the black pieces are doing amazing job, but how to proceed? Let's see what is the answer that people are giving. Again, please. Explain the idea behind your move. Learn to apply those general principles that we are discussing. It's so important. Mm -hmm. The more you apply those general principles consciously, the better you will understand. So a lot of people are mentioning the move f6. They want to open up the bishop uh, on e8, it seems. Some of them are mentioning knight c2. And I think uh, b5 is another move that is being suggested. Uh, I can also show... b5, the... I... okay, this. b5, I don't see much point because uh, the bishop e8 is tied with the defense of seven square uh f6 i also do not see why we need to open our our king side i think we would give some counterplay for opponent but the best move i think which i played in the game i think of course the position is so dominating that there must be a few ways to win i'm absolutely sure but the move i played i think the most precise and the most uh, clear positionally so as we said Playing on open file, try to penetrate to the second rank. And knight c2 forces an exchange because e3 pawn is attacked. So by we can eliminate very important defender. The c2 square is becoming available. And actually, see, the most active piece in white's camp has been exchanged. There is nice. no real counterplay. My king is safe. So there is h7 was a little bit of danger at some point, but it not anymore. Yes. So let's are, yeah. And I'm penetrating. And I think this was the last one, the last diagram. Guys, all of you here, whoever is watching, try to answer what should black play here. This is the last move. Uh, that the the last question for you. Again, try to apply the ideas we have discussed today. And again, uh one of the major probably things because many people are asking okay so many general principles how can i apply them so step by step and i think the most the most important skill to improve your positional play is just to look for coordination of your pieces you should try to use the energy of all your pieces you should you should care about every single piece in your camp right and the principle of force piece is very helpful here so just learn to analyze placement of your pieces learn to feel which pieces are good which pieces should be improved and another thing is ask yourself the question 
what are ideal squares for my pieces? Mm. How can I improve my worst piece? Right. Okay. Very important to mention, unless there is something very concrete. Mm. Because sometimes maybe your position is ready for very active concrete actions. Don't miss a tactical opportunity, right? It is always combination, chess is combination of like strategy and tactics. Right. Okay. And the answer which we have the most is b5, but there are also very strong players who have suggested bishop e7 in this position. I guess it's also possible uh, getting the bishop to b4, but I I like to, you know, I don't like to use the energy of all my pieces. I feel that bishop on g5 is still playing. Mm. Maybe that's kind of prophylaxis against move r h4, right? So mm. bishop e7. But I guess it is hardly a threat at the moment, right? And maybe pawn on h4 would be additional weakness, actually, right? Right. That's why I played b5. I want to improve my worst piece, which is actually was doing amazing job to prevent. And it's time to release the energy of my light squared bishop. So b5 was played. And let's see wow. now the bishop, the energy of the bishops finally released. Look at your pieces. And the queen sits on its initial square, but all other pieces doing great yeah. job. And that's another very important thing. Queen is a long range piece and it can it can do a really amazing job from its initial square. Mm. That's why you shouldn't develop your queen earlier. That's a typical mistake people make. They develop the queen without proper understanding that queen can do wonderful job from d8 or d1. Right. And then queen f2. And now as Nimzovich would say, the main aim is to reach the seventh rank for both the rooks. And so yes. you, you're doing it, bringing both the rooks in. And, and here I just, okay, very important part. See, you should understand that positional play, it is not only about, are about improving pieces and thinking from our very dogmatically, not at all. So it is always combination of our, like, uh, <laughs> A combination of our those general principles and very concrete approach to the game, right? Maybe you remember the game of Moksh. So I said you should value time. Yes. And you should, yes, still you should calculate lines, of course. And uh, you should find the most energetic ways. And here I felt that I I can play move bishop e7 because I saw that rook f7. Uh, I think there are so many tricks. There are so many weaknesses in White's camp. And I j that's a simple line to calculate, actually. Actually, uh, in our chat, people have gotten confused here. Some of them want to take bishop takes h4, which, which would then lose the game, yes? Yeah. And again, very important. <laughs> if you calculate, do it very, very carefully. Never play such moves like bishop h4 intuitively. Yeah. Never play such moves intuitively. It's time to calculate lines. So, so you... what's wrong with bishop h4? What is wrong <laughs> here? Guys, you played a brilliant game and then one move and it's all over. Absolutely. <laughs> Very important to understand. You can play positionally brilliant game. But if you make plunder at the end, everything is useless. <laughs> Yes, rook f8 is the correct move. A lot of them have mentioned yeah, this. Yeah, and just losing a piece. <laughs> right. So the move that you've mentioned here, and all of them have suggested many were rook, rook c1. c1. Nice exchange of the key defender, by the way. See? Mm. <clears throat> and the queen on f2 is overloaded. There are so many weaknesses in white's camp. So our... I call them tactical motives. This is what we are discussing in the first part of the course, working on the secrets of dynamic play. And uh, it's that's the first part of the course because we need to learn to play actively. We should understand our, first of all, we should understand short-term factors, right? right. Uh, dynamic play, tactics, how to play actively. These are always we should start with. Mm. And now comes the final blow of the game, the tactical move. 
rook takes rook a uh, rook takes knight because if queen so, takes then this is hanging but it is it is a long line okay it's not a long but still we should calculate precisely because the line is not over yet yes queen so, d, queen d2 is only one move which is obvious obviously doesn't work for white but there is another move you should calculate yeah it's, can you write the full line now what is the yeah. best defense for white and then how does black win there so write the full defense not just one move so whatever yeah. you've learned today i think the most important thing is don't just calculate one moves calculate the entire line in tactical positions so please uh, there was also another question which was asked could we have played instead of rook takes knight rook takes e1 knight takes e1 and then rook d2 maybe it doesn't work i guess uh, as well no, in that case, rook e7. Yeah, rook e7. Is rook f2 so. and rook c7. We don't win a piece, yeah? Yes. So the move that ha many have mentioned is rook e7, rook f2, rook c7, and now this little uh, important check. Yes, and this is my favorite. You play a great positional game, but then you should calculate a simple forcing line at the end to finish the game the most energetic way uh like as i say a la capa blanca yeah so he was a great master of little tactics little are uh, forcing lines to finish the game uh the most precise the most energetic way so what can we learn from this game i think this game is actually uh, we've learned we could apply almost every idea mm. we have discussed today. Yeah, first of all about our peace improvement, right? So, our you should learn to see our your good pieces, your bad pieces, in order to improve our your pieces as efficiently as possible. Our you should feel your worst piece, right? Our you should our you should value our open file, especially mm -hmm. if there is only one open file, it has great strategic importance. Like uh, this game is a really nice example about open file. Yes. Uh, then it was uh, a nice game about our exchangers, right? We saw a few nice exchangers like knight c2, rook c1. Yes. And it's very important aspect of chess. Uh, it is about positional play or dynamic play is very very important to master uh pawn play definitely you can see that uh, i would say one very important hint if you have a better pawn structure better not to change it mm. it's a very typical mistake especially i know many young active players they like to play with pawns and they play so many wrong pawn moves because they do not understand one very simple thing if you have a better pawn structure you have a long-term advantage. Preserve it. Enjoy it. Improve your pieces. And move f6, we saw today, right? Mm. In a better position, move f6 would have been a mistake because g5 followed by queen b1, and suddenly white is getting lots of counterplay. Brilliant. And finally, of course, the most advanced uh, skill is prophylactical thinking. We should learn to care about, pay attention to opponent's ideas, right? Such moves like bishop b8, h6, queen d8. So when you have a clear, stable advantage, so it's good not to give your opponent any counterplay. Yeah. Mm. So probably this is the most advanced skill uh, to develop, and this is also what we are working on during the course. Actually, the course is uh, we work on all those fundamental topics like peace improvement. Our pawn play, exchange of pieces, open file. And in all those classes, we definitely discuss the importance of prophylaxis, prophylaxis as well. So wow. Brilliant. This was uh, phenomenal, Alexander. Uh, we, we spent around a couple of hours today watching this, learning from this. I want to ask the people in the chat, did you enjoy it? Uh, Saraswati Saru, Saru says, thank you, sir. It was an amazing experience. Uh, so yeah, may maybe they can write what they learned the most. Yeah. 
yes would this be interesting is, to know this is something which you can write here but also uh, alexander do you have anyone whom we select right now or would you like them to write a comment and then we can select from there that one uh, prize which we wanted to give uh okay unfortunately i i could not follow their uh comments so well because it's, <laughs> there right. were so many so maybe what i can do i will go through the chat so then i will try to find out oh. maybe one or two best performers today i uh, you will go through the chat or we can ah uh, maybe okay if you would or like maybe that. someone else can do that <laughs> oh, i so, i would suggest course. something better uh could be that if people can write a comment at the end of the stream as to what they learned today from this and maybe we select from there would you and it is it is one uh, prize can be given this way okay uh, but i think okay still i think we should reward uh, ah, one awesome. or two best players for their performance today which is by far the most valuable i think right okay so the many of them worked so hard today hoping to get some some prize right they, okay so they should uh, okay, uh, I'll try to go through these comments. Uh, maybe it's an uh, uh, unrealistic task, I don't know, but mm. I, I also try. have some names I will share with you and then you, we can decide. Uh, yeah, maybe you can also give me some list yeah, of names sure. and then we can reward the, the, a few, one or, or a few people. Yeah. yeah, well, Narendra Khandekar says, great stream, lots of learning. Thanks, Alexander, sir, and Sagar. This Game Chess says this game shows how great Alexander was in his prime time. Hunter Hunter says this was amazing. Nisha says awesome. Thank you. Anirban Mundal. Thank you, sir. Kapil Dev. Thank you very much. Shruti uh, enjoyed it a lot. A lot of people enjoyed this. Uh, and uh, Nisha mentions the most valuable prize was the learning from past two hours. So I think uh, a lot of people... Uh, enjoyed that and I think guys if you want to learn further from Alexander then we have put a mail in the um, description I will also add the whatsapp number and from tomorrow starts the breakthrough course of uh, Alexander is yeah, it is a, the second part of the course, but actually it is absolutely okay. There is no big link between first and second part. The first part is devoted to dynamic play, ah. and it's quite different. But so, so our, the second we, part is the strengthen your positional play, correct? Yeah, so we are ah. going to work on all those aspects of positional play. We Today we have just briefly mentioned. Got it. Okay. So we are going to work in great detail on all those aspects and uh, so you will have a chance or to 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 do your homework and <clears throat> there will be video on homework solutions as well recorded by me for another one hour wow and of course one of the most valuable you will get a pdf file with all structured ideas about positional play on all those topics like peace improvement pawn play exchange of pieces open file all those topics very very structured our step by step uh, course so that's why if you want to improve your positional play if you enjoyed today's class if you found it useful for yourself you're welcome to contact so there are a few seats left of mm -hmm. course uh, you should contact us directly because your level should be sufficient for this course mm -hmm. you know we do not take everyone because uh, this course is really advanced and we need to know your level mm -hmm. so before to give your permission yeah so here so, uh, is the uh, also the whatsapp number written here i'm going to add it in our uh, chat it is plus 3809956268186818 okay so yeah people... so you can uh give uh, this is my personal whatsapp and, and i have another one which is from school whatsapp mm -hmm. so you can give both of them it's fine okay so uh yeah well alexander it was it was amazing thank you so much for spending time i learned so much and i'm sure that all the people here are going to learn a lot and uh, I, I guess you will be flooded with many messages today because I'm sure they learned 
a lot and that you shared uh, uh, your your contact so i think many people will write yeah i've just revealed uh, some ideas about what we are learning during the course but so many more ideas will come right. and this is really advanced course and there are so many nuances so many subtleties to learn to master about all those are topics and about positional play in general so it is the course that you will be able to are uh, to go through and in half year or in one year so this is the course i would say that you should study a few times for sure because every time uh studying this course you will be able to find more and more valuable ideas so that's why i recommend all my students to uh, revise course materials on a regular basis. This is how we can develop really important practical skills, yeah? It's not to say, okay, I attended today's stream, I've learned something, no. You came, you found out some valuable ideas. I cannot say you really learned something because you should develop those practical skills. And it is a lot about discipline. It is a lot about concentration. And this is what we are developing during the course. We work on those important human qualities like discipline, concentration, our hardworking, and many, many others. So that's a very comprehensive course that covers many different points. Fantastic. Well, uh, I hope that we'll we'll see you again soon, uh, Alexander. And thank you once again for for everything. Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a great pleasure to be here and to share my knowledge. So thank you very much, uh, Sagar. Thank you very much for all our students today. It yes. was really uh, surprising to see so strong group and so wonderful performance. I would definitely we will do our best to select the best today yes. and reward with some nice prizes. For sure. Actually, this prize is going to be a mini course uh, of like three classes uh, for one topic, Ooh. and it's really really valuable. Wow. And uh, so you can improve one of those topics greatly. But then, so those who contact me, you, I will give you options. So knowing your level, I will give you options to choose our, uh, the price which you would be happy with. So Brilliant. That is very cool. Uh, and uh, thank you all once again for tuning in and see you all soon uh, later for now. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.